รายการต่อไปนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสนับสนุนโดยแลกเงินด้วยบัตรเครดิตเกษตรกรไทยเที่ยวก่อนจ่ายที่หลังไม่มีค่าธรรมเนียมพ่นชำระได้จากธนาคารเกษตรกรไทยสวัสดีค่ะเทรนด์หรือกระแสโลกเป็นสิ่งที่ส่งผลต่อรูปแบบการใช้ชีวิตและการตัดสินใจของคนส่วนใหญ่ดังนั้นนักธุรกิจหรือนักการตลาดจึงอยากรู้ว่าเทรนด์ตอนนี้คืออะไรจะได้นำมาใช้ประโยชน์กับธุรกิจของตัวเองวันนี้เราจะพูดคุยกับคุณแดเนียลเลวีนผู้เชี่ยวชาญด้านเทรนด์จากสถาบันอบองไกด์ประเทศสหรัฐอเมริกาซึ่งวิเคราะห์วิจัยและติดตามสถานการณ์เทรนด์ต่างๆทั่วโลกเราจะไปดูกันนะคะว่าตอนนี้มีเทรนด์อะไรบ้างที่น่าสนและธุรกิจต่างๆจะสามารถสร้างประโยชน์จากการรู้เท่าทันเทรนด์ได้อย่างไรค่ะแดเนียลเลอร์บีนเป็นผู้บริหารสถาบันศึกษาด้านเทรนด์อาบองไกด์ที่นิวยอร์กสหรัฐอเมริกาและเป็นบรรณาธิการ w i k i t r e n d o r g ซึ่งเป็นเว็บไซต์ที่เกาะติดทุกเรื่องราวเกี่ยวกับเทรนด์โดยมีทีมงานราว 10,000 คนคอยบันทึกข้อมูลต่างๆเกี่ยวกับเทรนด์จากทั่วทุกมุมโลกแดเนียลเป็นผู้เชี่ยวชาญด้านเทรนโลกและเป็นที่ปรึกษาให้กับบริษัทชั้นนำหลายแห่งเพื่อช่วยส่งเสริมสินค้าและธุรกิจด้วยการรู้เท่าทันเทรน What is your definition of trend? Well, a trend is when you can see people doing something or thinking something in a differently, and you can measure it. In a particular direction. So all a trend is a shared sentiment amongst a group of people in a particular measurable direction. Like all of a sudden, you can see that a lot of people are starting to, you know, uh, feel that well, that that green is important. For example, there's a trend that's moving, and trends uh, are going to be different in different countries or with different age groups. Um, you know, it, it, they're, they're not the same everywhere. Is there a clear defining line between trend and fad or fashion? The biggest definer of it is longevity. So if it's if it's you know short, it's probably a fad, and if it's something longer lasting, it's probably a trend. So you know, let me, I'll give you an example with with green and eco. That's kind of fun. Um, There's a uh, you, you know let's let's say you own a, a dance club, okay, like a disco, and you know that people care about about green, and you say yeah, but you know I own a dance club. What what can we do about that? Why why is how is this trend important to me? Well, there's a, a dance club in in Rotterdam, Holland, called Club Watt, and they created their dance floor on top of a spring-like material. When people were dancing. It moves up and down slowly, creating electricity that goes back and powers the club. So it's the world's first green dance club, and in fact, it was so successful that the people who created this club have closed this club so they can go into business making these dance floors that they are, you know, selling and renting to events around the world. Uh, it was and it was done in, in like a really cool way with this like digital battery that you could see when when you're dancing on the floor. You could see that digital battery filling up. To encourage people to dance, and so, you know, the idea is that if if a company does something really cool to answer a trend, to embrace a trend, people sort of automatically gravitate towards that. It's sort of like the secret sauce that um, gets into people's minds. It's it's um it's consumer psychology. Are there any global trends that you see right now that are interesting? Social networking, for example. So people um, want to be connected with other people, and it's a natural thing that humans want, right? We want to make connections with each other. So we're seeing this trend of social networking, which has been done online, is now gravitating towards offline. That people want to make those same connections, or deeper connections, or more connections offline as well. So many companies coming up with new business ideas 
that use this particular trend of like, how do we, how do we in our business help customers connect with each other and become closer? And so for example, I just flew uh, an airline in the United States and uh, they have a, their seat back entertainment device. You can order at any time during the flight a, a drink from the flight attendant, anytime. but the cool thing is you can also order a drink for someone sitting in another seat. Oh. So you know they had this idea, this was done consciously, they said how could we make our airplane like a, um, you know, a fun uh, environment where people are connecting. Um, that was their answer to that. There's a, uh, the, a coffee bar that, uh, that, that just opened recently in, in New York, where I'm from, where the barista, the person who's running the coffee bar, is also a, a matchmaker, like a, a love matchmaker. And so when you show up at the coffee bar in the morning, you order a cup of coffee, and she talks to you about you know, who you are and who, mm -hmm. who, who are you looking for, what kind of person. Evaluate you a bit. Right, sort of evaluates you. And then, Later on during the day, if she finds somebody who she thinks is a good match for you, then she invites you both back for a cup of coffee uh, at, at her coffee bar. Coffee bars are all sort of commodified. They're all selling the same coffee. But mm. she took this trend that she knows that bringing people together is a major social trend and, and, and was able to use that in her business to create something that's really exciting to people. Do most trends originate from the West? No. What's so amazing now is that with the world getting smaller and information passing around just faster and faster, there's this cross-pollinization of trends that um, it, it's often hard to identify where things begin because they sort of are growing up uh, organically around the world at the same time. I would say that some, some things, maybe a different way to look at that though, is that uh, different cultures, different countries are coming up with cre different kinds of creative answers to those trends. So while this idea of social networking is global, the different specific ideas that companies are coming up to answer that trend are going to be different from culture to culture. And it's always fascinating to see that. Do trends happen by itself or do they originate from a certain group of people first and then spread around? Right. You know, that's an excellent question because both of those things are true. That um, sometimes trends just sort of organically happen. Um, you know, it's just like cult it's culture that we're always changing, something's always happening and, and it's sometimes hard to pinpoint exactly, you know, how they, how they began. And then other times, you know, a trend or more likely a fad will start because, uh, because of a company or a celebrity or perhaps both working together to make that happen. But you know, what we see is that culture continuously marches forward. Culture always moves and it creates, you know, new ways that all of us are thinking a little bit differently about things or um, it's, you know, trends sort of are culture. And then sometimes, every once in a while, there's a huge like earthquake, like culture quake, that changes the way people think and, and the way that something happens. For example, it, there was a huge economic crisis in 2008. And it really changed, we saw in our office immediately, how it, it changed the way people feel about the world. And, 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 and what that meant was, that before 2008, we were seeing a lot of people were sort of showing off their wealth more about like with bling and wearing fancy things. And after 2008, even rich people who could afford to, to do it were thinking, you know, let's focus on things that are perhaps really more meaningful than money. 
like things that can't be taken away, whether your bank balance goes up or down. And what I mean is friends and family and education and health. And what you saw was companies, of course, understanding that too. And if you look at, for example, um, uh, BMW's advertising, the, the motor car, their advertising before 2008 was very much like the fancy car to aspire to. And after 2008, they were fo focusing on things like safety, and, and this car sort of brings the family together. You know, we see that across uh, culture and across industry. <laughs> what can we expect from the Trump administration that will change trends around the world? Well, I think that the uh, Trump administration and election is a trend. It's part of a, it's part of a bigger trend. And the, the bigger trend is that the, the, the world, a lot of the world, is um, going through a kind of cultural revolution, social economic revolution at the moment, um, that we're seeing uh, is being reflected in the election of Trump or um, right-wing governments in, in Europe, Brexit effect. Um, these things are all connected. It's uh, anti-globalization sentiment trend right now. It is. It's a big trend. Um, and it's a trend because it was, it was mismanaged uh, that um, uh, while the world in general was getting richer with globalization, because you're producing things in places where it's cheaper to produce, the riches of that globalization uh, have not been shared equitably. And, um, and I think that what we're seeing is that's the roots of this revolution. What is the method that you use to capture the emerging trends around the world? You know, we have a, a very unique and unusual method for capturing trends, which is that we have about 10,000 trend spotters. And these are people who live all over the world, who every day are sending us things that they're finding that are new and unique and interesting in some way. And what we do is when we start to see the same kind of thing happening in the same psychographic or geographic or demographic, we connect those dots and go, aha, these are, these are trends that are forming. So when we start to see a lot of people start to uh, purchase the same kind of thing, um, you know, we, we might you know, go, aha, this is very interesting. Like, um, you know, home automation in some parts of the world is really taking off. Um, and this is the idea of um, the, it's, you know, some people are calling this in the home, the internet of things in the home. And it's when all of your devices, uh, your electronic devices are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And it, it started with um, a, a refrigerator by, by LG that knows when you're running out of milk and automatically orders it from the store to be delivered. So you don't even have to be involved. And so, you know, the future of uh, home automation is, are these kinds of devices. Technology, the prime mover of trends today. Excellent question. It's certainly a, one of the big ones. Yeah, I mean, t technology has changed the way that we live. I think the best example of that is smartphones. The the iPhone came out ten years ago, just ten years ago, and yet, um, you know, do you feel comfortable leaving the home without one? You know, like you feel naked if you if you leave without your phone. Um, so it just becomes so much part of of, of us. So much so in the last 10 years that we don't, it's hard to imagine what life was before that. It's funny how things are moving so fast. I can tell you that, you know, culture moves forward exponentially quicker, which means that the next 10 years will be much faster than the last 10 years. I don't know if you've heard of your, the Microsoft HoloLens. 
and it's um, it's a, it's it's goggles like a AR goggles, and um, what it is is it's so cool. It's you you don't need a mouse, uh, you don't need a computer mouse. It's um, it's gesture controlled. So you want to throw up a screen, you throw up a screen here, and it also listens to you. So you could say t put on the screen a movie, or a map, or the w the weather report. And you could have multiple screens going at different times to help you, perhaps if you're in the kitchen, with a, showing you with a, with a recipe. This sounds like the future, right? I wore it. I've used it. It exists now. So what would the world be like in 10 years' time? What well, are the trends? Yeah, so, so I think you know, what's happening is that we're seeing um, technology and humans getting closer and closer. So for example, if you go from one room of your house into another room, you know, you probably grab your, your mobile phone. It's just, it's a computer, it's a powerful computer. And in fact, they, in today's iPhone, there is more computing power than there was in Apollo 11, which was the, the first spaceship that took men to the moon. You know, and we all have this in our hands. So what, what, what we're seeing, the next step is for it to be integrated somehow in, in, our, in our bodies, which sounds scary. Mm -hmm. But, the, but, but the, the steps towards that is that we're seeing there's smart all kinds of things. There's, I, we already talked about uh, you know, smart goggles. I've seen smart uh, helmets for bicycling that, show, that reads how much um, blood oxygen levels you have, reports back to you. I've seen goggles for skiing that shows exactly where you are on the slope and you can change the music uh, automatically and shows you when you go over a mogul how much air off the ground you've come. I've seen smart socks for runners that will analyze exactly the steps you take and help you get a better stride for running. I've seen tattoos. Okay, maybe this is getting closer. Uh, smart tattoos that um, are printed onto skin, and the ones I've seen are temporary, um, that monitor uh, the same kinds of things that a smart watch would monitor. What do consumers want today? Consumers are looking for um, a few things. W one, they're looking to work uh, and to buy from companies that share their core values. They want the world to be better f for their children than it was for them. And especially younger people are caring more about the environment and, 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 and other people in the world. And, and companies are, are responding to this. So that's, that's, that's one thing. Consumers want things that are more meaningful. So not just showing off wealth or bling, but that help them learn and be more, more healthy, creative, productive. Um, so what that means is that, for example, we're seeing a lot more with companies. When you buy something in a store, um, oftentimes the things that you buy come with like a story that tells you where it's from, how it was made, um, and, the re and, and people like that. They'd like to know where it's from um, and if it's helped other people. There's movements towards um, buying things that are locally made, handcrafted. Um, th these are sort of the buzzwords that you know, we're seeing all over the world. Uh, uh, you know, healthier foods and um, things that are different. People want things that are different from other people. There's, I would say that's one of the biggest trends in the last few years and will certainly continue, is that we all want to see ourselves as sort of special and unique. And we want unique things that are just for us. And the second part of it is kind of about like braggability, that we want to show other people these cool things that we have that nobody else has. And so a lot of, again, companies, of course, understand this and they're responding to it. Uh, if you go on, you know, the Nike sneakers, if you go on their website, nikeid.com, um, you can create a pair of sneakers that nobody else has, like from, you know, 15 different value propositions, the color of the swoosh and the bottom and the tongue, and you can write anything on it. 
No one else will have a pair of sneakers like that. And there's um, some prestige to having something that nobody else has. Uh, you know, especially when you look at the luxury market. You know, look, rich people can all have the same car in their, in their garage. This is not um, prestigious anymore. Prestigious is experience, unique experience that um, you, you come back from a, from a vacation or something that you've done that you can, you know, brag about or talk about or teach somebody about. different businesses incorporating trends into the way that they do business to serve people. We're seeing in our office every day is um, amazing, amazing answers to these trends that businesses are doing. And I'll give you some examples. There's, um, you know how a lot of uh, uh, buildings plant green things on their roof. And then the next step after that was some buildings and companies planting, like hotels planting things that you can eat on the roof that they're serving in restaurants downstairs. Well, the, a couple of years ago, the, the, the first hotel uh, in the world to not only just put um, edible plants on the roof uh, was a hotel called the Royal York in Toronto, Canada. They put beehives on the roof, and they, they use those bee, bees to pollinate the plants. But importantly, they also create honey. And uh, last year, they created something like 200 kilos of honey that of course they serve in the restaurant downstairs, but more importantly from a marketing perspective, they market the fact that they have these beehives on the roof in the middle of the city, and they invite guests to the roof to, to see the bees and learn about how bees are kept in an urban environment. So people are choosing to stay in that hotel because it comes also with, with a learning experience. Um, so businesses are understanding that what's important, these trends that are so important to people, if you do something creative with those trends, that customers will gravitate to you. เวลาที่พูดกันว่าอย่าตกเทรนเรามักจะคิดว่าอย่าเชยแต่จริงๆแล้วนอกเหนือจากจะไม่เชยแล้วการเข้าใจเทรนหมายถึงการเข้าใจความคิดและความต้องการของคนส่วนใหญ่ด้วยเพราะฉะนั้นถ้าเกิดว่าสามารถนำมาประยุกต์ในการสร้างสารรค์สินค้าและบริการให้ดีได้ย่อมเอาชนะใจผู้บริโภคและส่งผลดีในแง่ของการทำธุรกิจด้วยค่ะพบกันใหม่สัปดาห์หน้าวันนี้สวัสดีค่ะ